Thanks for tuning in to Double Tap here on YouTube. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell. In this video from this week's episode, we welcome Ramia Amuthan and Red Zale as we dive into conversations on their first experience with audiobooks and synthetic voices. The latest tech. People love iPhone, and it's an important part of our daily lives. Interviews. You see far too many products that come on the market that you look at that you say, was a blind person ever even consulted for something like this? Accessibility. The most interesting thing over the last couple of years is the emphasis on gaming uh, and accessibility. This is Double Tap TV. Welcome to Double Tap TV. I am Mark of Lalo. And I'm Stephen Scott. Now, Mark, we're not alone this week. Well, what do you what do you mean? I, I feel I feel like I'm alone. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I can tell you you're not. Well, first off, I'm here. Thanks for noticing. Uh, also joining us this week are two guests, familiar voices, a familiar face to AMI audiences. That's Ramia Amnuthan, one part of Kelly and Company, airing every weekday afternoon on AMI-tv. And, of course, the host of the AMI Audio Book Review Show. Uh, Ramia, thank you for joining us. Thanks, Stephen. I am the better part of Kelly and Company and... Uh... <laughs> fun part of AMI Audiobook Review. Absolutely. And Red Sale, one host, the host of AMI's original podcast, My Life in Books. Red, thank you for being here. Thanks for inviting me. And, uh, well, I'm all by myself usually, so it's nice to have company. We're here today to talk about audiobooks, and then we're going to segue into something a little more controversial and related, and that is synthetic voices. So let's start the party with audiobooks. Where did this idea, and why did it come about to have an audio version of of books, an important question I think we should ask. So, Red, why, why don't you kick things off? Really, it grew out of the number of servicemen who were blinded in the First World War, especially by mustard gas. And there were thousands and thousands of the servicemen coming back uh, into unemployment and a uh, fairly bad social situation and they wanted to access books and newspapers and one of them um whose name has completely escaped my mind uh in the uk uh hit on the brilliantly bright idea of having books read out onto records i think it was originally shellac records and they worked out that obviously books were a lot longer than three minute songs. So they slowed down the recording speed and started off with just a handful of books. I think one of the first was the Gospel According to St. John from the Bible. Then they had Typhoon by Joseph Conrad and The Murder, Murder of Roger Ackroyd by Agatha Christie, and that kind of set the tone for the way audiobooks have been ever since. They've been very broad, very inclusive, and catering to all tastes. I've got to be honest, I didn't actually expect you to have all that deep, rich history at your fingertips. I'm quite, I'm quite impressed, but here's a question, a follow-up for that. When did you actually get into audiobooks yourself? Uh, when I was at university, so just after I was registered as blind um aged 19 back in 1988 89 um and the rnib over here in london uh asked me what i was studying i said english literature and they went oh well we've got something that'll suit you and they said we've got this massive audiobook library all on tapes back in those days, sort of about the shape and size of videotapes. So you certainly knew when they came through your letterbox. And they made reading the likes of Thackeray and Richardson and Dickens a lot easier because somebody else was doing the heavy lifting. Ramia, what about you? When did you get into the world of audiobooks? I, since I was a kid, um, was being sent audiobooks by CNIB, same thing, in the mail, physical copies of Daisy Discs, and I had a Daisy player sitting at home. But, you know, I don't remember when, like, how much I was into them, because I would just put them on and then fall asleep. Uh, it was like story time to me, but... I was actively starting to listen to audiobooks um, 
in university. And that was because uh, I found it easier to get through big volumes of things. And this was when I started to use screen reader as well. So there was the like audio in my ear all the time. Um, it was feeling more efficient to listen to tons of stuff and not feel exhausted by straining my eyes and trying to read physical print and uh, lighting and all of this. So I'd say, you know, about 10 or 12 years ago is when I actually started listening to audiobooks uh, for real. But they were always in my life before that. It's just that I wasn't really paying attention to what I was listening to. Guys, stick around uh, because coming up, we're going to talk more about this whole subject of synthetic voices, which is creeping in more to our audiobooks these days. Uh, we'll get into that next here on Double Tap. You're watching Double Tap TV. Get involved. Follow us at Double Tap On Air or email us feedback at doubletaponair.com. Double Tap TV will be right back. Thanks for watching this Double Tap video. Again, if you're not already subscribed to our channel, hit that subscribe button and don't forget the notification bell. It will help you get notified when we've got a brand new video just like this to share with you.